Hello and welcome to Pact Publishing. My name is Atendra Chaturvedi. In this section, we will look at upgrading vSphere 6.x deployments to vSphere 6.5. In this section, we will look at the update manager version 6.5 installation and configuration. We will look at the Windows based version as well as the latest vCenter server appliance version 6.5 embedded update manager. There is a section on the update manager download service 6.5 installation and configuration as well. This is uh, on, on the Windows based uh, side, but uh, it's really important because it's not covered very often. We have a lab for that. We will then go through the process of using our update manager capabilities to patch vSphere deployments. We will upgrade from vSphere 6.0 in a lab to vSphere 6.0 update 2 and then we will upgrade that deployment to vSphere 6.5. We will also install and upgrade our vCenter versions from version 6.0 to version 6.5 in a lab environment. In this video, we will look into the update manager version 6.5. The update manager is also known as the VUM or the WUM, the installation and configuration of version 6.5. We will look at the update manager version 6.5 installation and configuration in a Windows environment and obviously it will be in a lab environment as is most of our course. We will also look at the latest implementation of the update manager which is embedded in the vCenter server appliance, the vCSA version 6.5. Again, logged remotely into a native Windows 2012 R2 bare metal server at address 192.168.0.67. I have a network drive attached to it and which has the uh, vCenter server version uh, 6.5, uh, the Windows version uh, image. And uh, in that uh, image, you will find a folder called Update uh, Manager. I'm going to double click on Update Manager and go down to the VMware Update dash Update Manager application. Right click and run as administrator. I allow it to run. It asks me the language. going through its configuration. It's now preparing to install. And it came back with a warning message that setup has detected that the Microsoft.NET Framework 3.5 SP1 prereq is not installed. This will be installed before the actual product installation starts, which is fine. Uh, remember, I'm running a, a very recent version of Windows Server 2012 R2. Uh, you may not have this problem. I click OK and it goes through the process of installing .NET 3.5 SP1. So it installed .NET 3.5 SP1 and we will now install the VMware vSphere Update Manager by clicking Next. I accept the terms. I click Next. Okay. Now it says it will upgrade ESXi 5.5 and uh, 6.0 host to ESXi XI 6.5 and uh, in, in our labs uh, later on we will actually go through the process of updating an ESXi 6.0 host to ESXi 6.5. The checkbox here is checked which says download updates from default sources immediately after installation. Now I can deselect this option if I want to look at the default download sources before the download or I want to use a shared repository by using an update manager data service uh, source. I'm going to leave this alone and let the updates uh, come in uh, and be stored on this server and under the control of update manager for now. So I'll just click next and then I click on next. I will fix this. My SSO domain name was incorrect. I put in packed pub one should have been packed pub branch. It requires a database and uh, what we're going to do is to look at the options here which is basically enter a 64-bit uh, DSN. The key here is to use a bundled database we have to install the SQL Server 2012 Express for small deployments by launching the VMware vSphere Update Manager as auto run which I actually had not 
done. And that is the reason why I have to enter a DSN name. But I'm looking to use the Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Express instance. So all we achieved by uh, right clicking and then uh, run as administrator was actually to install the prerequisites of uh, the .NET 3.5 SP1. So we're going to go back and I will come back to this screen after I install the SQL Server 2012 Express instance. So when I do that, basically it starts up the SQL Server 2012 um, installation. So it's going through its process of installing SQL Server 2012 Express and I will pause until that is done. So the important part is to use uh, auto run and I ran it as administrator and everything is fine. Uh, before that I went directly to the application installer and uh, ran it that way as administrator and uh, it, it stopped because uh, there was no option available to use the express version of SQL Server as the as an embedded database and uh, all that happened there was that the prerequisites of uh, .NET Framework 3.5 SP1 were taken care of. So the SQL Server 2012 Express setup is uh, proceeding. So once the installation of SQL Server 2012 Express completed, it put me back into the vSphere Update Manager again as before. And we will quickly step through this process. You've seen this once before. I will click Next, accept the license agreement, Next. We've explained the download updates earlier. Username is it's packed pub branch dot local, which is the SSO domain. For the vCenter server that we are going to connect this to, and uh, specify how this vSphere update manager should be defined on the network. Please make sure this IP address or host name can be accessed from both vCenter server and hosts. Uh, look at the uh, various uh, options. The reason it uh, it brings this up is because I have, uh, I believe, five or six. I think it's uh, six uh, NICs uh, that are available uh, to this uh, Windows uh, host. Uh, I'm going to keep it really simple and just uh, this is the one I've been using all the time. So I'll just uh, do that. Uh, I have an internet uh, uh, connection. We can uh, click on this. I'm not using a, a, a proxy uh, actually. Uh, so I'm going to leave that alone and then I'll click next. Uh, I can always make the proxy changes later on uh, as well. Uh, there is a capability to uh, do that. Uh, click next to install the folder so update manager is going to be installed I'm not going to worry too much about this infrastructure is fine and uh, this is a reasonable place for it as well of course if you have different uh, drives available then you'd, you would make the appropriate changes so I'm going to click on next and it's ready to begin uh, installation and it is going through the process of uh, installing the update manager so I will pause and come back to it when there is something more interesting to show you. So it is now registering the update manager extension with a vCenter server. Interestingly enough, it's using uh, IP6 addresses. So here we have it. We hit uh, finish. It's successfully installed. And that is how one installs uh, the uh, update uh, manager. Of course, we'll uh, show you the next uh, steps uh, as well. So after the installation of the update manager was completed, on packed pub branch dot local I logged back in into my vCenter server that's running on the Windows 2012 R2 server there and as you can see there's a new tab here which is the update manager tab so when I click the update manager tab I get the various uh, options that I have the uh, user interface uh, which is uh, available for update manager which uh, basically is you either go to the uh, admin view which is where you can actually uh, administer uh, the uh, update uh, manager. You can manage it, which means you can set up the various baselines and, and so on. And we'll go into that in more detail uh, later. Or you can actually go back to attaching uh, baselines 
and this of course uh, one would need to uh, have in place uh, before uh, one does uh, remediation and we'll talk more about baselines and and so on uh, later on so just to give you a, a brief uh, idea of the uh, user interface uh, there's a new tab which is the update manager tab that actually opens up and then you have another area which is the administration uh, area uh, for the update manager uh, server and then this is the area where one attaches baselines and so on uh, to do remediation which we will see very shortly so we are back in the lab we're looking at update manager and uh, we will cover the attached baseline scan for update stage patches remediate and and so on uh, when we actually do the uh, upgrade and patching of uh, esxi uh, servers for now let's go to the admin view and uh, take a look at manage settings you can see there are a lot of settings here let's go through them reasonably quickly network connectivity this is how various clients communicate with the update manager server this was set at uh, installation time uh, and update manager patch store that's used and server ports and the ports that need, uh, need to be open uh, the patches uh, on this uh, hosted machine uh, which is dot uh, 67 this is where the windows based uh, vCenter is actually uh, running uh, of course this can be uh, edited okay and then you need to restart so you can change the patch store address don't want to do that uh, let's look at uh, download uh, settings these are the uh, download uh, settings here uh, for downloading new patches and uh, virtual appliance uh, upgrades either at intervals in download schedule or immediately clicking download now so uh, for example I can uh, download patches and VA upgrades or, and I can import patches in the repository so I, if I click on import uh, patches it'll uh, uh, it'll uh, go to a file a zip file uh, for example uh, that, that I had downloaded separately and I could then extract the patches uh, from that zip file it uh, uh, comes in handy uh, for uh, devices uh, such as devices from Intel and stuff like that that may not yet have their patch uh, available as part of uh, uh, an uh, ESXi based uh, patch so we're going to cancel uh, out of that the download now would uh, go directly to uh, uh, VMware uh, sites basically and then it would uh, look at uh, start uh, downloading those patch uh, definitions uh, you can put a download schedule the process has started 25 percent you can set a download uh, schedule uh, enable schedule downloads so what I have is I run these on a daily frequency which is uh, quite okay of course this can be uh, changed uh, as well you can schedule that notifications that come from uh, VMware you can run them hourly so that uh, if there's something uh, happening out on the internet uh, there's some kind of an exploit somewhere and if uh, VMware is aware of that uh, as well as maybe there's some patches available and so on that can uh, be uh, uh, obtained uh, of course all these can be uh, edited uh, as well we look at the uh, VM settings so whenever you remediate a virtual machine uh, should you take a snapshot to be able to order to be able to roll back and the answer is yes that's very good you don't delete those uh, snapshots and of course the standard warning that if you have snapshots uh, then you may be impacting the performance of that virtual machine uh, you can take a snapshot you can either not delete it or you can keep it for a certain number of hours until you're sure that your remediated virtual machine is back up and running host cluster settings we have seen or we will be seeing uh, when we do the upgrades that uh, the uh, host has to go into maintenance mode and so what are we going to do with the virtual machines uh, that are operational so if I edit those settings the options are I can power off the virtual machines I can suspend the virtual machines or do not change the VM uh, power state uh, retry entering maintenance mode distributed uh, power management fault tolerance and high ability class admission control because if you're running in a cluster uh, those uh, virtual machines uh, will be uh, migrated and it's all totally uh, controlled also uh, given uh, your admission control is still uh, satisfied your constraints are still satisfied you can enable parallel remediation of hosts in a cluster if there is uh, ample uh, capability or resources available for uh, admission control and you can migrate powered off and suspended VMs to other hosts if a host must enter uh, maintenance mode 
Uh, usually uh, not necessary the powered off and suspended VMs, but if you want them operational, of course, then uh, you want to do that if you want to turn them on while the remediation is actually uh, happening. And the virtual apps, do you want to do a smart boot about uh, after uh, after uh, remediation? And enabling smart boot selectively reboots the virtual appliances in the VApp to maintain the start startup dependencies so that you don't have any uh, issues. Okay. So smart boot stays in place. This is all very uh, standard. So you can see that now uh, this is a very uh, smart uh, system. Host baselines. Host baselines are basically uh, a group of patches or upgrades that uh, uh, are specific to hosts. Some are predefined here. So there's a critical host patches and non-critical host patches that are defined. Uh, and uh, one can uh, attach these baselines to a host, which we will do uh, in, a, in a later lab. And uh, based on that, the system makes sure that they are all up to date. And the same thing applies for uh, virtual machines and virtual appliance baselines, uh, VMware tools upgrade, VM hardware upgrades, so that it matches uh, the host to match, let's scroll this a bit more, to match the host. And again, these are all predefined. We have a patch repository. So the system is currently uh, downloading uh, those uh, patches. I believe we set it up earlier for uh, to download uh, either now or on a scheduled uh, basis. Uh, we just did one uh, just a few minutes ago, download patch definitions. So we are uh, completely uh, up to date with our definitions. Uh, the patches, as you can see, range from 5.5 through uh, version uh, 6 uh, as well. And these patches are now in the patch uh, repository. Uh, one can then set a baseline uh, for these uh, patches and then hosts can be patched when that patch baseline is applied uh, to that. Of course, critical patches can be automatically done because they are predefined. As you saw here, there are critical host patches are, are defined. So the ones that were just downloaded, you saw, are selectively put in into the critical and the non non critical baselines. So that when you or when you just say critical host baselines, everything that is critical that's pertinent and uh, applicable to your version of ESXi is automatically applied. When you want to do a host upgrade, uh, you need ESXi uh, images. Uh, you can import the ESXi uh, images uh, from your workstation. And then you apply, you create a baseline. So I go back to the compliance view and I create a baseline, for example, this baseline. And uh, what I do is uh, I, in that baseline, I actually specify this baseline image that I picked up in this admin view this baseline image that's here and then you have the virtual appliance uh, upgrades uh, there are many so a lot of them apply to uh, the VMA uh, the we realize appliances uh, let me just scroll this out to the side a bit more uh, so we realize business for cloud identity appliance uh, some Zimbra some VMware Postgres as well that's interesting but it's uh, quite back level release date 2015 so I'm sure my version uh, 6 is is good here so these are the uh, virtual appliance uh, upgrades uh, that are also available. And you can again attach these to virtual appliances uh, with baselines and so on. And you are able to upgrade that. When you look at uh, monitor, there are events and uh, notifications. So here's uh, and uh, yeah, the other events uh, as w which were applicable to update uh, manager. So when we had done our initial uh, upgrade or I have done a, an, a, an upgrade of uh, server 2202. So the events that happened are all actually out there. Uh, notifications, uh, there are no notifications so far because I think in our settings we've said check them once a day. Let's click on that to check notifications now. And there are no notifications uh, from uh, VMware that we need to take uh, action on. So that's the way this uh, update manager uh, works uh, and uh, we will use it uh, to patch and upgrade uh, in the next series of labs. In this lab, I'm logged in into the vSphere web client and I'm logged into my vCenter server appliance at address 192.168.0.210. As you can see, this is a version 6.5 appliance. Here we go. And uh, the reason I wanted to show you this is uh, because uh, the update manager capability is now included in the vCenter appliance. So there's a tab on the top right hand side, just like in the Windows based uh, version. Uh, you have exactly the same options up here as well. So if I go into the admin view, 
as an example you have the settings including all the standard ones that are available there you have the host baselines you can create new baselines or you can see here these are the predefined critical and non-critical host patches we can click on these to get some of the details so this is already operational and is uh, downloading based on the settings the download settings and the, and the download uh, schedule the host baselines as we've seen and the virtual machine and the virtual appliance uh, baselines uh, same way uh, the patch repository exists uh, the patches are being uh, downloaded ESXi images are imported in exactly the same way as uh, with the Windows based uh, version uh, here we go it's uh, just have to browse and pick up the ESXi uh, image and then that can be uh, used in a ESXi uh, upgrade and of course the uh, virtual appliance uh, upgrades uh, we can download at any point in time I click on download now and that uh, process would uh, start as well when I go to the compliance view you have the same options here attach baseline and then you scan the inventory object for updates then you stage the patches it makes things work a lot faster and you have less downtime if the patches are already stayed staged on the inventory object you know usually a host uh, then you can uh, remediate uh, as well and then of course the go to admin view uh, can attach a baseline click on that it's exactly the uh, same way as on the Windows based version so uh, the point of uh, this uh, very short uh, video is to show you that the update manager capability is now integrated into the vCenter server appliance uh, which is a huge step forward and it's going to be very uh, popular in a later video I have a lab that uh, takes you through in great detail the entire update manager uh, process uh, in terms of uh, using it to patch ESXi 6.0 up to the update 2 level and then to upgrade ESXi 6.0 from 6.0 uh, upgrade 2 to version 6.5 the process is shown on a Windows version in that lab but it works exactly the same way as it would if I had done it uh, using this interface with the v vCenter server appliance version 6.5 in the next video we will look at the update manager download service version 6.5 the update manager download service is also known as the UMDS and we will look at its installation and management.